what are like i just don't know no other halloween sounds or monsters Hold on. like how does frankenstein sound how Whoa. does what frankenstein <laughs> he don't talk do he talk he called it like he moans uh, I think. yeah boo <laughs> I was trying to Boo. look up some Halloween sounds. Boo, strangers. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm Brit. And I'm D. Mistress Brit. Oh, my uh, God. A dom- Dominion D. I don't know. Um, anyway, I was looking up um, sounds. and Well, I'm on YouTube, but it's just showing, like, I guess they're on loops. So the oh. one video is like eight hours. Oh yeah, so for you to play at like parties or like haunted yeah. houses. Yeah, and I say sounds, not sounds, like iconic characters. Mm. Cause I got sounds, and then remember we used sounds last year you for the that? intro. <laughs> yeah, I hear that one. <gasps> Boo, <laughs> <laughs> strangers. What? Oh, the I don't know what that, that was. was. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> dying. Somebody <laughs> dying. It's like what? <laughs> Somebody yeah, getting their purse took was. on the subway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these. Uh, I don't know what these are. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a siren. That's a person doing this. <laughs> oh man, that's a car alarm. Basically. Okay. <laughs> and welcome to another spooky episode of it's a strange world after all the podcast where we discuss true crime cases the supernatural urban legends conspiracy theories and all of the things that keep the world strange we are in the second week of spooky season I hope if we did our math correct, we are in the second. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I'm just kidding. I Um, I was about to say. (laughs) We think, we believe. Um, As mentioned before, it is our favorite time of year. So all month long, we will dedicate all of our episodes to All Hallows Eve. Um, What was I going to say? Oh, did you hear about the McDonald's Halloween Happy Meal Buckets? Allegedly. No. Okay, so 90s kids. This is between me and you. If you are not a 90s kid, I need you to skip forward about 15, 20 seconds. But this is just for the 90s, late 80s too. No offense. I was late about to 80s. say, I'm not even a 90s. <laughs> you, are a, now you are a kid in the 90s. You were yeah. a kid, even a teenager in the 90s, because you probably got a little Happy Meal. You know, you were like, I wasn't that hungry. So give, just hit me with a Happy Meal at 14. You know, I know adults wrong with who it. still get Happy Meals. There's nothing wrong with that. But it is rumored. Do you remember the Halloween buckets? Mm-hmm. Okay, it is rumored that they could be back really soon. So that's like the oh. orange bucket, the green with the orange pumpkin bucket, the green witch bucket, and then the ghost bucket. Okay, I think I I think I saw that on Twitter. Now that I think about it, yeah. Yes, we think it's gonna be returning nationwide on October eighteenth, twenty twenty two. They haven't really confirmed it. Like McDonald's hasn't really confirmed it, but it's like buzzing on like social yeah, media. Yeah, and then I feel like it's just gonna be adults going up there to get them. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> Us. I mean, I take shoot, hell. Let me get three. I want all three. I want the pumpkin, the witch, and the ghost, just yep. for nostalgia's sake, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I hope so, though. I think that would be really cool. It would be cool if they came out with the, like, okay, so for Christmas, they used to have, like, the 
Happy Meal things where you could like push out the pictures and make your own ornaments. They used to have that for Christmas. You, you know that? what? I don't. I only remember because like one year they did, maybe it was the year the Little Mermaid came out and they did Little Mermaid themed Christmas ornaments that you could do. Hmm. And we had those on our Christmas tree till we were like in our 20s. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't remember that. I'm going to look that up. So for today's Halloween activity, I didn't want your opinion. I'm just going to do it. So, you are going to do a quick three question trivia. Halloween trivia. I'm about so to I get all this you. wrong because I, I no, don't, don't. You would be surprised. <laughs> don't believe it's not in hard. me. And watch me get them wrong. No, come on. Okay. I need so, to prepare for this stuff. Okay. You you got it. Fee, 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 fee. <laughs> root, root D on. Go D. And then I don't type fast enough to use Google. You better not cheat. You better not cheat. No (laughs) cheating. The first one is easy. You're going to be like, oh, okay. You ready? Not really, but continue. Where? This this first one. (laughs) Where does the term jack-o'-lantern come from? I told this story on the. um, I know. So see. Because it's the stingy jack, right? Yes, bing 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 bing. That means you got it. Yes, yes, you yeah. Because okay, that was my story on last year's Halloween variety show. It was, and it was a good, a good one. So again, if you haven't listened to it, go back and listen to it. Because he made a deal with the devil, and we found out that the devil was not the smart in that story. He wasn't. Between Stingy Jack and teaching people how to play guitar, I don't know. You know <laughs> what he did. But okay. Why do why did women look in mirrors while walking downstairs at midnight on Halloween? I have I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. It's like an old It's something about it's like a- ghosts, right? Like spirits or something. Yes, but like, specifically so- so they're Close. they won't get trapped or something like well, that. Well, it, it was to see like the past loved ones. So like essentially like to see their like um uh, dead loved ones. Oh like their you boyfriends know or that had passed. Yes. Or, or, okay, I did yeah. know that because I just know about mirrors and everything, like with spirits and you're supposed to cover mirrors, but that there was an episode, you remember that show, um, Beyond Belief, where you had to guess wh- whether the stories yeah, were true or not. I was not. just it watching was a that. Story. Like, <laughs> yeah, I can't remember what season, but that was part of one of the episodes. Because like, he was trying to come back to warn her about something. And she was there using the little mirror. Okay. You know, you knew in your heart of hearts, <laughs> you knew. Okay. Okay. And last... One should be a swing, a home run. What sort of mask? No, not a miss. A swing and a a swing and a make. A swing and a make. (laughs) What sort of mask does Michael Myers wear in the original Halloween? Oh, um, William Shatner, right? (laughs) That is correct. Because the studio had such a small budget. They had to use the cheapest mask they could find. It was a $2 William Shatner mask that they spray painted white. Fun fact. Okay. So I did pretty good besides the second one. But I technically got that right. You did. So half. um, uh, You know, I so you get, I'm going to get you a McDonald's uh, Halloween bucket if they come out. (laughs) That's what you. And I want my bucket too. (laughs) <laughs> for real <laughs> that's what you, you gonna die and haunt me and be like i want my yeah. halloween bucket yep <laughs> oh okay. just like the dad on a uh, creep show that haunted yes. for a piece of cake yep that's gonna be i was me. about to say if you don't get that reference you either need to watch creep show or go back and watch the live that we did Oh, you mentioned it in the live. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But yeah, you did good. 
there's one more. It may not make it into episode. I just thought that this was tragic in general because I hate candy corn. But there are a whopping. Yeah, you know that I don't like candy corn. There are a whopping thirty-five. Oh no, you don't. That was Angelica. That was you and Angelica. And Dawn. If she eat candy corn, I bust her. She She better not eat no dang on candy corn. I don't. Because we were talking about it when we were at um, where were we? Big Lots or something. That's disgusting. No, it's not. Anywho. There's apparently a whopping 35 million pounds of candy corn made each year. So that is total of 9 billion pieces. And they probably oh. mostly end up in the trash. Mostly. Because um, they're trash. I need to get a P.O. box so people can send me candy corn. Yeah, send you candy corn. Yes. Right? Candy corn Not- and Werther's. Werther's, 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 Werther's. <laughs> Disgusting. But thanks for playing. I think there's Maybe. a Werther's candy corn, I think. So, yeah. That is that. doubly disgusting. Who is out here eating I haven't it? tried it, though. I think it's one. I believe I saw it. But if it is, I'll try it. Candy corn is, ugh. Uh, I mean, the you like the Sour Patch what, candy corn, right? Yeah, that's different, though. <laughs> it, they taste better. They have a better flavor. They don't just taste like buttered sugar. It's literally tastes just like some, like somebody took some butter and like rolled it in sugar and cut it into pieces. That's what it tastes like. That is delicious. That sounds delicious. No, no it doesn't. Yes, no, yes. Doesn't. That's why you got a toothache now. <laughs> no, I can't even talk. My business. I was about I to know. say, <laughs> and I can't even talk. <laughs> I need all of my wisdom teeth pulled. Mm. Okay. In today's episode, we discuss the Halloween mystery of Nima Louise Carter, who disappeared from her locked home while she and her parents were sleeping. Crazy. This one is crazy. Yeah. Because what? Why? Yeah, why? Yeah, really why? Like, when we get to the end of it, I think everybody really going to be like, but why? Like, What was the purpose? (sighs) Okay. On October 31st, 1977, 19-month-old Nima Louise Carter was abducted from her home in Lawton, Oklahoma. At around 9.30 p.m., her mother, Rose, put her to sleep. About an hour later, her father, George, checked on her before going to sleep. Sometime during the night, Nima began to cry, and since her parents were using the cry it out method, they did not check on her. When they woke up the next morning, Nima was gone. After searching the house, the Carters called the Comanche County Police. Can you imagine, like, like you said, why? And... Like, how bold, how bold do you have to be to take a child from their home? Like, if this is the case, if the parents really had no, at this stage in the game, they weren't suspects, then yeah, how bold do you have to be to take a child from the home where the parents are still sleeping? Yeah, and the locked home. So, yeah. It kind of reminded me of a... John Bonet Ramsey, but she was killed inside the home, right? Yeah, like they found her dead. Yeah, okay. Detectives arrived at the scene quickly and determined there was no sign of forced entry. The windows to Nima's room were still securely locked. This led to speculation that her parents may have been involved in her disappearance. Further investigation revealed the abductor had been hiding in Nima's closet and waited until the Carters fell asleep. This means that whoever this was had knowledge of the home. Yeah, that's what I was that's what I was thinking. That if it wasn't the parents, whoever did this had been inside the home before. Mm-hmm. And then whether they were someone like whether or not they were someone like close to the family or possibly like a squatter situation oh yeah 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 a frogger yeah frogging i forgot i always forget what that's called yeah have you ever watched that show no you asked me that uh, <laughs> i've not yeah you gotta I'm gonna watch have that. <laughs> i'll watch it when you watch evil <laughs> okay 
deal. Okay. The community came together and conducted searches and provided as much assistance as they could. Unfortunately, there was still no trace of Nima and there was no motive for her abduction. Nearly a month later, some boys were playing were playing in an empty duplex apartment four blocks from the Carter's home. One of the boys opened the door of a refrigerator and a small body fell out. That, I wonder how old they were. Cause like that is traumatizing. I thought about that. Yeah. When police arrived, they quickly identified the partially decomposed body as that of Nima Louise Carter. She was still wearing the red t-shirt and diaper she had been put to bed in. An autopsy revealed Nima died as a result of suffocation after being locked inside the refrigerator. She didn't have any other injuries. So again. So yeah. They just put her why? in there. Yeah. Why? Why? That's why I'm like, you didn't, which God forbid, like, but you didn't sexually assault her. You didn't physically abuse her. You just put her in there and left her to die. Like. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I have a lot of questions. Same. Nima's abductor had taken her from her home, carried her four blocks to the vacant duplex, and locked her in the refrigerator to slowly suffocate. Detectives were confused until they remembered a case in 1976 which had several similarities. In April 1976, three-year-old twins Mary Elizabeth Carpenter and Augustine Lena Carpenter were abducted from their grandmother's home, which is a few blocks away from the Carter's home. Two days later, children playing near an abandoned house heard faint cries. When they looked around, they found the twins trapped inside a locked refrigerator. Thank goodness these kids like, had the wherewithal to go check it out. because Yeah. And then this was just... um. Not even really a year earlier. That's what I was thinking when you said April uh, 1976. I was like, yes. And again, why? Yeah. Augustine managed to survive by breathing through a small hole in the casing of the refrigerator. But Mary died from suffocation. The abandoned house was less than a mile from the duplex where Nemo was found. So these are two different abandoned uh, properties yeah the carpenter case was still part of an ongoing investigation when nima was abducted and detectives were confident they knew who was responsible when augustine was rescued she said jackie burnett had put her and her sister in the refrigerator police interviewed a young man named jackie burnett but they were able to rule him out uh, what was I going to say? He must have had like a an alibi. Yeah. Okay. Because it doesn't seem like there was like any DNA evidence left out. Oh, yeah. It, pretty much. It wasn't anything. All they had to go on was what Augustine said. Right. That she, that it was Jackie yeah. Burnett. Mm-hmm. But then another thing too, she's three, right? Yeah. Okay, I just wondered how I, okay, I just didn't see like a three-year-old giving like a full name. Yeah, unless it was, I'm thinking she knew him from the neighborhood and that was probably the first name that came to mind. But then again, well, we'll keep going. Police brought in a child a child interview specialist and Augustine named Jackie Rubido, a 17-year-old family friend and babysitter. On the day the twins were taken, police questioned a witness who said they had seen Jackie dragging two young girls in the vicinity of the abandoned house. And so, yeah, I don't understand maybe, yeah, why she named that guy at first. Yeah, maybe she was just confused because, I mean, she was three. Maybe. That's why I was thinking, did she say that, like, clearly that it was Jackie Burnett? Yeah, because she probably didn't know how to say Rubido. 
Yeah, that's why I was like, was she trying to say this name instead? Yeah. Because I don't even know how to say Rubido. Yeah. And we're not even sure that's how you say it, so. So. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, but she got the Jackie part right. Right. Police asked the Carters if they knew Jackie. They said Jackie was their babysitter and that she babysat for them the night before Nima disappeared. Jackie lived in the area with her mother and grandmother who were both in poor health. So this means that she would have known the house. Right. My thing is, well, not unless, because I'm like, okay, wouldn't she have to have leave? Wouldn't they have saw her out? If she babysitted, like if they went out for Halloween, came back, Mm -hmm. she babysitted for them. It's like, okay, good night. Did she pretend to leave? But then... That's because I would think you would lock the door behind her. That's what I'm thinking. But or maybe she left the window open or unlocked. Oh, possibly. And came back inside. Yeah, that makes sense. Like the window to Nima's room, maybe. And then she locked it once she got in. Because that would explain why they said, yeah. No, go ahead. No, because I was going to say, they said the window to her room was locked. So. Right. Yeah. But then. So How the front she door. How would have now? The front door. I was just about to say. <laughs> so I'm thinking the door, she left the door unlocked when she left. She left out the front door is what I'm thinking. Because even by her leaving, it's still not forced entry. Even if the door was unlocked after she left. But. Because they're saying, yeah, that the house was essentially locked. Locked. Yeah. So how did she get out? Not unless she had a key. And maybe they didn't think. I didn't read anywhere where they said that. But maybe they didn't think about it at the time. You know what? Maybe she did. Because. They did make a big deal about how close that community was because they were all Native American. Okay. So maybe she did have a key by being the babysitter. Right. So, because that's the only thing I can think of because now that you bring that up, yeah. How was that possible? Yeah, I just thought about that. Yeah, because they said she had babysitted for her the night before and it was like, okay, but. Where was she? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously she was there, but yeah. How did she get back in the house the night before? Jackie was finally charged with the murder of Mary Carpenter in 1979, but wasn't formally charged with the murder of Nima. When the case went to trial in 1982, the prosecution linked the two cases and highlighted the similarities. Jackie denied all the charges. The jury couldn't agree on a verdict, and there was a mistrial. Hell, I like how couldn't they agree on a verdict? Because technically, technically, there's no proof that she did that to Nima. They have a lot of um, evidence with the twins, but not. Oh yeah, that's with true. Nima. Yeah, man. I feel like, well, no, because that'd be messed up. But I, I mean, like, it's I the ex- like. she did the exact same thing. It's the same MO. That's what I was about to say. That's what I was about to say. Because yeah. it makes me think of uh, the Tika, Tika Lewis with the guy that kept going to the bowling alley. Oh, yeah. And it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, she was their babysitter. She's her babysitter. She had access yep. to the house. She had. Mm, yeah but i guess yeah jackie was tried for a second time for the murder of mary carpenter in may 1983 the prosecution linked the two cases again and jackie denied the charges once again augustine carpenter was 10 years old at the time of the trial in her testimony she recalled that jackie asked the twins to go with her and they followed At the time, Jackie was a friend of the twins' aunt, who also lived in the home with the twins and their grandmother. She remembered Jackie taking them to the house, taking them to the refrigerator, and telling them to get inside. 
She told the girls their aunt would come back for them and take them out for ice cream later. How messed up is that? That is. How messed up is that? Yeah. And it's not even even like, yeah, because, I mean, they trusted her. It's not like this was a stranger, like they knew her. Right. So, yeah, that's sad. Okay. So, Miss McCaig, I think that's how you say that. Miss McCaig was the witness from earlier, the witness who claimed she saw Jackie with the girls near the abandoned house. She also gave her testimony in court. She says while she and her husband were doing some work around their home, she saw Jackie with a tight grip on the twins and the girls were trying to pull away. She said a short time later, she saw Jackie walking back again, but this time she was alone. Miss McCaig stated that the reason she didn't come forward initially was like other people she didn't want to get involved, which... That whole thing, so that reminds me of uh, this case, uh, Kitty Genovese, I think. So it was exaggerated, but because I think like the headlines were like 36 witnesses and nobody came forward. Oh, yeah. It wasn't that many witnesses, but it was it was enough. And everybody said they didn't call the police because they... Not that they didn't want to get involved, but they figured since other people knew what was happening, that somebody else would have called the police. So they was like, oh, well, somebody else is going to do it so I don't have to. Yeah. It just reminds me a little bit of that. But again, what would you do? Like, you would call, you would say something. These are kids. Yeah. Wasn't there a documentary on Netflix Mm -hmm. about that? Um, I believe so. I think so too. I don't know that it's still on there, but I think it was on there for a while. It's the oh, um, yeah, it Kitty was. Kitty Genovese syndrome, or like uh, the um, bystander effect. Yeah, is bystander what, effect. Yeah, because yeah. it was also mentioned on like an episode of Law and Order SVU. Because there was mm-hmm. a case they did a case similar to that on there. Yeah. It suggests that people in a crowd are less likely to interfere in a crime than a single witness. Yeah. Um, I think, too, in Miss McCaig's, in her case, she might have also been like, well, like you said, if they all were close and knew each other, she knew that they that she she probably knew that she was that Jackie was a babysitter for them and maybe oh. she just thought maybe they were in trouble or something but yeah by the time you saw her walk back by the, the house and she was alone yeah. like I would have been like wait where, where are the kids at because I know you didn't take them back home yeah that's true that's true like nah sometimes you got to be a good Samaritan sometimes you got to put on your good Samaritan cape because they could have found they could yeah. that could have saved her life if she would have or saved both of the twins lives like life because if she would have reported that as soon as it happened or said something as soon as it happened they probably could have found them a lot quicker yeah. or like not even calling somebody just going over there and she probably oh. could have heard them crying that's true yeah 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 and then call the police because you can't let her get away with that hell no yeah this time the prosecution managed to convince the jury and jackie was found guilty on first degree murder she was only convicted for the murder of mary jackie rubido was sentenced to life in prison jackie maintained her innocence until her death in 1985 of liver cancer um i don't believe that she was innocent no i don't believe i was just thinking man because the trial happened in 83 and then you know what yeah but this happened though like in the late 70s no i know to late 70s i was just thinking so but she was 17 and yeah that's what i was thinking yeah so she probably did do it she probably that was probably her karma in all honesty she probably got sick like that yeah and then like Again, why would you do that? Exactly. Why? Did they do, do we know? 
maybe because i don't remember seeing it if they did a psych well because they had to have done a psych evaluation but did they put like the results anywhere i don't remember seeing anything about that but let me see if i can find something real quick because yeah i would think if you're doing something if you're doing something like that and then there was no yeah like we said physical assault sexual assault yeah um let's see it's not a crime of passion nope hmm yeah i don't see anything that's so weird and then like yeah a lot of the articles that i saw were like just straight to the point they were pretty short oh wait yeah this one i did not see this article um so george carter nima's father says that he doesn't think Jackie Rubido did it. Oh. He was never convinced that she murdered his daughter. Um, He says, his he's quoted as saying, the Jackie Rubido we knew just doesn't add up. I never sensed that about her. And then they said Nima's grandmother, Audrey Carter, um, characterized Rubido as just weird and believe the babysitter was capable of committing the crime huh that's weird hmm wait you said whose grandmother uh nima okay 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 yeah so it says in a 2019 interview george carter said he wished he could speak with rubido who had died 14 years prior saying i'd like i'd like to talk to jackie now um, I'd ask her if she killed Nima. I'd hope she would tell me the truth. And he also stated that he had never forgiven Nima's killer, so he doesn't think associate she did them it. as the t- okay as the yeah. same person. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I believe she did it. Yeah, because okay, it's proof. There is proof that she did that to the twins. Yes, and. It's the exact same thing. She did the exact same thing. Yep. And she had access to Nima. She had access to the home. Yeah. She was there that night. Like, mm, I don't know, man. That's a little too convenient. Yeah. But yeah, I don't see anything about her mental health or if she was given any kind of evaluation. Okay. I'm just... Just the human in me. You know, we always want to know why. Why they do it? What you do it for? Yeah. Because that is intense. That is. Then I guess. I mean, do you have any additional final thoughts? No, that I just think she did it. I just don't know why she did it. Because, I mean, according to these articles, she was never evaluated. So, I don't know. Yeah. And then she was denying it anyway, so. Yeah. Because, yeah, I agree. I think she did it too. And I would be curious. I'm curious as to why and then how, like, because how we talked about her getting back into the house. If she left, did she ever leave the house? Did she say she was going to let herself out, pretended to let herself out, and then went back upstairs? Like, what? How did she pull that off if she's one Yeah, it could have been that. Yeah, she probably could have told them she was leaving and then didn't leave. Yeah. That is all, folks. Please follow us on Instagram at It's a Strange World Podcast, Twitter at Pod. I don't know how I messed that up. Twitter at Pod Strange World. Every time. (laughs) I know. Twitter at Pod Strange World and on Facebook and TikTok at It's a Strange World After All. Also, if you are listening to us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify and like the show, please go ahead and give us a five star rating. And if you're feeling extra strange, please write a review. Please, thank baby, you. please. And thank <laughs> you. We want to know. We love to hear from you. We do. What did you think of this week's episode? Also, if there's anything else in the world of strange true crime cases that you would like us to cover, let us know. If you have any personal stories involving true crime or the supernatural, we would love to have you on the show and share them with our listeners. 
Do not forget that we are introducing movie reviews. Movie reviews of the horror. You have to do that every time now. Because everybody does the beep, 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 beep. Uh, If I remember what the heck I did. Uh, yeah, movie reviews of the horror, thriller, slasher, and true crime genre. So if you have any movies or documentaries and want to hear our uncensored, unsolicited opinions on them, let us know. You can email those submissions to it's a strange world after all at gmail.com or DM us at any other social media platforms D mentioned. Even if you just want to say boo, we'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> we will ah, but we'll be here still. <laughs> well are you trying to scare me? No. Or what are you I was saying oh, maybe was they like, I don't know, maybe they want to scare us. <laughs> or just come say boo just boo okay. D just <laughs> the next picture she posts just <laughs> put do boo that. in the comments <laughs> 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 boo boo we were like why are they booing do her that. they <laughs> will get deleted <laughs> <laughs> you can boo under my I haven't posted in a long time but you can always <laughs> boo under mine just boo under our page oh yeah Boop. Yeah. Put a so little ghost. When we post, well, not this episode because this episode is serious. Oh, but yeah, that's true. Any other ones, you can boo us. Yeah. We're here for it. We're here for the booze. <laughs> tomatoes, tomatoes, tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for tuning into another episode of It's a Strange World After All. Oh. And thank you as always for keeping it spookily, creepily, scarily, (laughs) strange (laughs) with us. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I need to be like (laughs) like a Barney. I need a TV show. Like, you know what I mean? Or like Molly, who was the lady on the big comfy couch. That's what I need to be. I need my own TV show. What was her name? Because I think the was doll was was Molly. Molly, yeah. But what was her name? I feel like that's Mandela effect. <laughs> Lunette. Oh yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah.